Hello again and welcome back to Garage Science. Since I moved into the new shop, I've been working to get everything set up just right. But winter is upon us and so the drastic temperature shifts between the middle of the day and the middle of the night are enough to affect my Maker Gear 3D printer. My solution to this is to create an enclosure that will protect printing components from both drafts and large shifts in ambient temperature. I started by cutting two 20 and a half inch, two 24 inch, and two 27 inch lengths of 2x4 since that's what I had on hand. I then used a jigsaw to cut each 2x4 in half. This gave me enough pieces to build the frame of the enclosure. I then clamped the pieces together, drilled pilot holes, and screwed each of the pieces together. The goal overall size of this enclosure was 24 inches by 24 inches by 30 inches. By measuring the diagonal lengths of the frame, the squareness of the frame can be checked. When both diagonals are equal, then the frame is square, which means not crooked for all the non-carpenters out there. In my case, the frame isn't perfectly square, but it's pretty close. Keep in mind that the most advanced tools I'm working with here are a miter saw and a jigsaw. I finished screwing all the frame pieces together to get the skeleton for the enclosure. I then cut out the side panels from a 4 foot by 8 foot sheet of hardboard. Only five out of the six sides got a panel so that the enclosure could be placed over the top of the printer. I did this mostly because I was too cheap to buy the plywood necessary to give the enclosure its own floor panel. I used flange button head screws to attach the panels to the frame. I used a pilot hole for each screw to minimize the risk of cracking or splitting the wood frame. I then measured and cut the opening out of the front panel for the plexiglass door. The plexiglass door was 19 inches and 3 quarters wide and 20 inches tall. The hinges were attached with a wood support bar for the plexiglass and then onto the frame of the enclosure. The other side of the door I attached a wooden overlap panel and drilled large holes that would allow the overlap panel to fit around the button head screws on the front panel of the enclosure. I drilled additional holes on the front of the overlap panel so that a magnet could be embedded so that the door would be held shut between the magnet and the button head screws. I used hot glue to hold the magnets in place. With that, the front door of the enclosure was complete. Now in order to mount the cooling fan for the enclosure, an exhaust hole needed to be added to the back of the enclosure. I decided to only remove sections of the exhaust hole so that an additional cover could be used to control the airflow. You'll notice I cut all the way to the center on one of the three holes and that's just because I was being stupid and not paying attention. I used another piece of hardboard cut to a similar shape and screwed it onto the enclosure with a couple of plastic washers to provide a small gap between the enclosure so that it could be easily rotated. I then mounted the cooling fans to the inside of the enclosure. I also mounted an LED strip to the top of the enclosure frame so that in the future I can do some nicely lit 3D printing time lapses. I provided a link to the LED strip I used in the video description. To control the temperature in the enclosure I used a simple thermostat you can get easily online and I provided a link to it in the video description. The STC1000 is a very simple and easy to use thermostat. You may recognize this thermostat from my other videos because it's the exact same thermostat I've used on all my heated electroplating baths. It's a tough little device that's endured a lot of abuse. There's a few ports on the back to supply operating power and a separate heating and cooling relay that close when needed to maintain the desired temperature. The temperature sensor also attaches to the back of the unit. To mount the thermostat, I simply drilled a few holes in the top of the enclosure and secured the thermostat with a few zip ties. To wire everything, I basically wired the LED lights through a switch in parallel with the cooling fans which was wired with the cooling relay on the thermostat as its on off switch. I used a laptop 12 volt power supply for the fan and LED strip. 
I decided to insert the temperature sensor into the enclosure by about 4 inches at the center of the top panel. After inserting the sensor, I zip tied it in place, but not so tight that I wouldn't be able to move the sensor in and out if I wanted to. I used even more zip ties to provide some kind of cable management so that it would look like I at least tried to make it neat and pretty. I then plugged everything into an extension cord and with that it was ready to place over the printer. The power cable and touchscreen had to be connected and were fed through an additional hole I cut into the back of the enclosure. And just like that the enclosure was ready for a test drive. It's pretty cold at my shop and it's regularly 40 to 50 degrees either in the morning or throughout the day. So I turned the heated bed on just to see how hot the enclosure would get. Unfortunately, even with the bed set to 115 degrees Celsius, the enclosure had a hard time getting hotter than 25 degrees Celsius. To remedy this, I added foam insulation to the inside of the enclosure. This actually helped with the lighting because the insulation provided a semi-reflective surface on the inside of the enclosure. After installing the insulation, the printer was able to much more easily heat the enclosure to the 32 degrees Celsius set point. I have set up my thermostat so that the cooling fan kicks on once the temperature set point is exceeded by half a degree. And now you can see the completed enclosure. I think it turned out great, and I've printed a number of items on it since and couldn't be happier with the results. Well that's it. Let me know what you think in the comments and be sure to click the like button. Make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications, and also share this with your friends and help this channel grow. And as always, thanks for watching.